Good morning, St. Joseph's School. I hope you can hear me. We're having all sorts of technical difficulties. It seems like the, the story of our lives with Facebook Live. Uh, it's actually was going so great, so smoothly for several days. And then, uh, so hopefully uh, you can hear me and see me. I'm going to check something on this other camera here. And I hope you can hear me. I hope you can give me some sort of indication that you are able to um, hear what I'm saying and maybe give a like or uh, maybe a comment in the, in the uh, comment section that yes, indeed, you can hear me. And I will uh, try to verify that that is in case, that is in fact the case that you can hear me. And then we can, uh, then we can proceed with school mass. A little bit late, and I do apologize for that. So uh, let's see real quick. It says I'm live, and I want to see that you are able to follow what I'm saying and doing. So let's give me a second. Da -da 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 -da. All right. Give me a second. Looks like I've got some people on. almost there give me one second I'm trying to make sure that the people over at uh, st. Joseph Catholic Church are able to follow along this as well with this as well and so I'm trying to share it to um, to those sites so that they can follow along so give me one second Ah, oh, good I'm getting word that you can hear me <laughs> very good and I'm looking at the wrong camera I know that that's okay uh, so uh, it's because I'm working on the on the uh, <laughs> on the camera so I'm working on the computer to make sure that everything's working fine so I hope you can hear me I hope you can see me Anne Marie was playing some beautiful prelude music for you on the organ and probably none of you could hear it so sad uh, so uh, I hope everything is going well right now uh, if you can hear me, just give a thumbs up so I can see the thumbs up, uh, and I'll make sure that we are all good. <laughs> um, so, a couple things. Hi. <laughs> Happy Easter. It's great to be back with you for School Mass. Thank you to Ms. Owens uh, and uh, Ms. Mack for uh, helping to arrange this, uh, and I do apologize for the technical difficulties we had. Uh, normally it's not an issue I think it's because of cross posting it makes it uh, cross posting from the st. Joseph's Church to the school it just makes things a little more complicated maybe Facebook it's just too much for them to handle so anyway it's great to see you even though I can't see you normally on a Thursday morning this church would be full of kids and it'd be awesome uh, but sadly you all are home and we're here and I'm here and there's no kids here, but you're there. You're on screen, and so I, I, I'm happy to see all of you this morning, uh, even if I can't see you. Um, so, a couple things. Uh, first of all, I said Happy Easter. We are still in the Easter season. Easter was, what, uh, a week and a half ago, but it's still the Easter season. The Easter season goes all the way until Pentecost. So, Happy Easter. And because it's Easter, there's a, a great joy because Christ is resurrected. And that's why we have the Paschal candle. This really big candle represents the light of Christ, the light of Christ resurrected, shining for the whole world to see. And so all through the Easter season, we have this Paschal candle lit. And it's lit beautifully right now. And of course, we also have it lit for baptisms because that same light of Christ shines at every baptism. When a little child or an older person uh, gets baptized, the light of Christ is shine shines upon them. So uh, it's the Easter season. You might be thinking, well, Father Redmond, why are you wearing red if it's the Easter season? Is it because my name's Father Redmond? 
I think that would be a good enough reason, but no, that is not why. It is because, well, why do we wear red? There's two main reasons why we might wear red, and it has nothing to do with my name. One would be, as I mentioned earlier, Pentecost. Anytime we invoke the Holy Spirit, the color of the Holy Spirit is red in terms of our liturgical colors. Red symbolizes the Holy Spirit. But this is not Pentecost, because that's not for 50 days after Easter. Uh, so what would be the other reason why we might wear red? If you're a kid, yell it out loud. When we celebrate a saint who is a martyr, somebody who died for the faith. And so red, of course, is the color of blood. And so that means somebody spilled their blood for Christ. And so who was the martyr that we're celebrating today? Does anybody know? I can imagine the, the kindergartens raising their hands, they know. And if you said Saint Adalbert, you would be correct. Today is the feast day of Saint Adalbert. But that is not the, and he is a martyr and a bishop, but he is not the, the saint that we are going to celebrate today, as much as he deserves celebration, I'm sure. Uh, today is also the, saint, the feast day of another saint, who maybe you've heard of. His name is Saint George, St. George, and I'm not talking about my dog. George is a very saintly kind of dog, uh, but I'm not talking about my dog. I'm talking about St. George, St. George, who was a martyr, who died for the faith. And so I'll talk a little bit about him during the homily. Now, one other thing I wanted to say. Now, as many of you all know, many of you students know, and maybe many of the adults know as well, I used to be a teacher, and I was a Spanish teacher. And as a Spanish teacher, I always knew that the best way for a student to learn a foreign language was for them to actually speak it, for them to say the words. It's really necessary. And if you're in Spanish class, you know this. You have to speak the word. You have to practice it in order for it to kind of become ingrained. Now, I was a Spanish teacher, and, but I learned a little bit of French. By, by, you know, I went to France, and I just started speaking French. Parlez-vous français? Uh, je ne sais pas. Je suis perdu. I, I could just say things in French. I don't, I mean, I, you got to speak it in order to speak the language. And I went to Germany. I didn't know a lick of German, but I just started speaking German uh, to people. Uh, Wie geht's? Oh, gut, danke. Uh, um, wo ist mein Baby? Wo ist mein, mein Eis? I was just speaking German. I didn't know how. I just started speaking it. And you got to speak it in order to understand it and learn it. And you, don't, you have to be fearless. And if you get it wrong, no problem. No problem. So here at Mass, we have, of course, Latin. We have Latin. And, uh, and we have a little bit of Greek, too. And so during the Mass, even if you don't understand it, even if you don't necessarily know all the words, try to sing along in the Latin and the Greek. So the Greek part is Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christ and that means, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. So when, when I sing that, you sing along and know what we're asking for. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. There's another time when, when I speak Latin or we sing Latin. It's the Sanctus. Sanctus, you might be thinking, well, I don't know what that means. That's fine, I'm going to tell you what it means. And then when you speak it, you connect what it means in English to with the, with the Latin word. And so sanctus, sanctus, sanctus means holy, holy, holy. Notice the connection between sanctus and saint. They're very related words, sanctus, saint. In fact, in some languages, uh, I think in German, a saint is a sanct, a sanct, sanctus, sanct, Georg would be George, Saint George. Uh, and so anyway, sanctus, 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 holy, holy, holy. Sanctus, Sanctus, Dominus, Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus, Sabao, Dominus Deus, Lord God, Dominus Deus, Lord God, Sabaot, of hosts, the hosts of all the angels, Lord God of hosts, Pleni, 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 Sunceli, Eter, Pleni means full, full, like plentiful, plentiful, Pleni, Sunt, Cheli et terra, Cheli, the heavens, the cielos, the heavens, et terra, the land. Full are the heavens and the land of what? Plenis ut Cheli et terra, gloria tua, your glory, 
Your glory fills the heavens and the land. Hosanna in excelsis. Then it, uh, then it goes, uh, Sanctu, Sanctu, Benesis, Gloria Tua. But then what? Uh, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domine. Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domine. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Benedictus qui venit. Venit to come in nomine, the name. Domine of the Lord. Hosanna in excelsis. I feel like I skipped a line. Hosanna. I, oh, now I'm going to look it up. Ah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Latin. When you speak the words, when you sing it, <laughs> you all are probably laughing at me because I couldn't remember. I think I skipped the line. Uh, Sanctu, Sanctu, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabao, Veni sunt celia terra domina tua, Hosanna, Nessis, Benedict. Oh, anyway, <laughs> you all are surely laughing at me. Um, the other time when we speak Latin, Mortem tuam annunciamus domine. Mortem tuam, your death. Mortem, your death. Mortem tuam domine, O Lord. Your death, O Lord. Mortem tuam annunciamus. Annunciam, we announce your death, O Lord. Domine. Mortem tuam annunciamus domine. Et tuam and your resurrectionem and your resurrection. Confitem, or we confess. Donec venias, until you come again. And then the last one is Agnus Dei. Agnus Dei. You all probably know that one. That is Lamb of God. Who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Agnus Dei. We told it then is in nomine domi. Anyway, you know what you're saying. Agnus Dei, we told it in peccata. <laughs> I'm so messing it up. Anyway, during the Mass, sing along. Sing along with the Latin, sing along with the English. Uh, and when you're at home, when it's time to sit, you should sit. When it's time to kneel, you should kneel. When it's time to stand, you should stand. And become an active part of the Mass. So I'm sorry I went on this little uh, uh, Latin lesson. Uh, it was kind of off the top of my head, as you can tell. So uh, remember, today is the feast day of St. George. And so we're going to celebrate the Mass for him. Uh, and then I want you to think of those people that you might want to offer the Mass for. Those who are living, maybe those who are sick, those who might have coronavirus, maybe other people who are ill, who have other uh, issues going on, maybe the, all those small business owners who are struggling, all those who might be struggling financially, all those who are affected by this whole situation. Pray for them. Uh, and then also pray for the dead. Offer the Mass for people who may have passed away from the coronavirus, or maybe other people that you know who have passed away. And offer this Mass for them. And so you know how to do that. Uh, make this a kind of a spiritual sacrifice that, unite, that you unite with this one sacrifice of Christ on the cross. And so uh, please uh, enter into the Mass as actively as possible. I'm going to make sure everything is okay with the computer, and then I'm going to go over to the sacristy and say a little prayer. And hopefully Anne-Marie, will you play a little bit of organ? Oh, good. She's going to play a little bit of the organ while I do something else. So God bless you all. We'll see you in a second.
This is the one who was not deserted by God in the day of struggle and now wears the crown of victory for faithfulness to the Lord's commands. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Welcome, children. Welcome, St. Joseph students, St. Joseph parishioners. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. George, a martyr for the faith, a martyr for Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Here he reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had killed him, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy the remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man. But out of them all, the Lord delivers him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia.
because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, today is the feast day of St. George. St. George, who was a martyr. And a martyr is somebody, that word martyr, it means somebody who gave their life. But they, it's specific. It give, they gave their life in testimony. The blood of the martyr is their testimony for Jesus Christ. And we hear that word testimony in the first reading. We have, where did it go? Uh, we are witnesses of these things. And what does a witness do? A witness gives testimony. And then we have Jesus saying, He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. A martyr is a witness. A martyr is somebody who gives testimony. And, you know, St. George was alive in the 200s. In the 200s. And he died around the year 303. Long, long time ago. And yet, St. George is one of the most well-known and well-beloved saints in the entire world. 1,700 plus years later, St. George... St. George died for the faith. Now, there are all sorts of stories about St. George. St. George fighting a dragon and defeating a dragon. And St. George uh, appearing uh, 700 years later in battles during the Middle Ages. Uh, St. George, a patron saint for so many people. And some of those stories are, are probably true, and some of them might be a little bit exaggerated. But what is definitely true is that St. George was a soldier, he fought for Christ, and he died for Christ, giving testimony, bearing witness with his blood. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, St. George is the patron saint of England, but we're not in England. He's the patron saint of many different uh, Countries and causes, but maybe they're not really our country, our cause. Well, we too, like St. George, have to be willing to stand up and fight. Now, I don't mean you fighting with your brother and sister. That's not the type of fighting I'm talking about, as your moms and moms dads will tell you. I'm talking about fighting for truth fighting for what is right, fighting for Jesus Christ. We have to be willing to stand up and fight for what's right, fight for truth, fight for Jesus Christ. Now, even a second grader can do that. Even a hundred-year-old person can do that. And all of us in between, we can do that. We can stand up and fight for what's right, fight for truth, fight for Jesus Christ. And we have to be willing to die for Jesus Christ. We have
have to be willing to die. Does it mean we will die for Jesus Christ? Probably not. But we have to prepare ourselves for that possibility that maybe, maybe in standing up for Jesus Christ, it might mean that I die. And as a little kid, I can make that commitment. And many little kids have. I made that little commitment when I was a little kid. I'm willing to die for Jesus. You can make that commitment. And I make that commitment right now. I'm willing to die for Jesus right now. And maybe I won't die for Jesus in a bloody kind of way. But at the end of our days, because all of us are going to come to the end of our days one day or another, will we die for Christ on that day? On that day, will we make a decision that I die for Jesus Christ and unite all of our suffering, unite all of the difficulty to Jesus Christ's difficulty, Jesus Christ's passion on the cross? This is what St. George did. And he did it so powerfully that for hundreds of years later, people know his name. People name their kids after St. George. I didn't name my dog after St. George. I named him after a, a cartoon character. But St. George is a powerful saint. He fought for Jesus Christ, and he died for Jesus Christ. Just like all of those apostles who shed blood, who died giving testimony, they were trying to kill him right in that very first reading. And of course, as Jesus Christ himself died, dying actually for all of us. He died for us. And so we thank God for giving us witnesses who are willing to die for Christ. The apostles, witnesses like St. George and all the other martyrs. And we only ask that maybe we can bear witness like they did. And if you would please stand, let us now offer our prayers and petitions to God, our loving Father. We pray for the church, that the church may always be a witness to Christ's love in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may see the witness of Christians giving their lives, giving their livelihoods and lead the world with wisdom, help them to fight and overcome this terrible disease, and always lead with Christ on their mind. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are suffering, that they might unite their suffering to the suffering of Jesus Christ on the cross, and have the saints and the angels come to comfort them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this community at St. Joseph's School, St. Joseph's Catholic Church, that we too may always bear witness to the love of Jesus Christ in our community, at the school, and here in Petersburg and the surrounding areas. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our beloved dead, those who have died from the coronavirus, those other people who, whom we love that have passed away from other causes, that they may see the Lord face to face in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear these prayers and that you answer them according to your holy will. For we ask them in the name of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen.
my sacrifice and yours may be accepted from God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, which we offer to your majesty in commemoration of the blessed martyr George, that it may lead us to obtain pardon and confirm us in perpetual thanksgiving. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr George, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim, Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabao, Plenis Uccelli et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. Please kneel. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you first in your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mary, our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for the offer for themselves and all who are here to them, for the redemption of their souls, the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, and living in truth, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, his spouse, the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew. James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and count among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. Once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who are those sinners, open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share of fellowship with the holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us and beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, the mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Within your homes and maybe with each other, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his holy ones. Alleluia. Rejoicing at this feast day, O Lord. 
Grant, we pray, that we, who in this divine banquet proclaim the death of your Son, may merit to be partakers with the holy martyrs in his resurrection and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And before the final blessing, I just want to thank all of you once again for joining us at this school mass. Um, and I apologize for uh, the Latin lesson earlier. Uh, not that I, but just when I'm on the spot, it's hard to remember all those. But then I hope when we sing it during the Mass, uh, we are able to get it right. And that's where it really matters. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be with thee, we hope pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Regina Celi Letare. Alleluia, quia que me ruisti portare. Alleluia, resurrexi sicut ixit. Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deo. Alleluia. Once again for joining us. Uh, you know, I figured, well, if I'm going to do a Latin lesson, I might as well tell you what I'm saying when we sing that that hymn at the end, the Marian Antiphon. Regina Celi, Letare. Uh, Regina Celi, Queen of Heaven. Letare, rejoice. Alleluia. Quia qua meruisti portare. Who was deemed uh, worthy to carry the Lord? I th to bear. To bear? The, to, the oh, she did qui meruiste uh, portare, alleluia. Uh, resurrexi sicut dixi. He is resurrected according to what they said. Alleluia. Ora pro nobis. Deum. Pray for us to God. Alleluia. So, um, anyway, uh, it, it, that's the Marian antiphon that we sing during the Easter season. And so, those students who are still with us uh, maybe don't know that. Uh, so, because we always do the Marian Antiphon at the end of the Mass. And, uh, but this is a new one because we haven't had a Mass during Easter yet. So uh, thank you once again for joining us. And uh, I hope you all have a very blessed day. Make sure you're doing all your students that you're fighting for the Lord. Not fighting with your little brother and sister. Fighting for the Lord. Fighting for Jesus Christ. Fighting for truth. Fighting for what is right. Always. All right. God bless you all. Have a very good day. A safe day. Please be careful out there. And um, be good. God bless you.